why the heck are prices of homes going up in Las Vegas during a pandemic? Can that even be right? What's up everybody, I'm Adam Hopkins and I'm a Las Vegas realtor and I absolutely love helping you find that perfect home. Welcome and thank you for joining us at The Vegas Report. Everyone's talking about the Las Vegas home market, wondering if we're doomed to repeat the 2008 housing disaster. Some are even hoping for it. All the while, the market in March was going up in value. We sold 30% more homes in this March than we did the previous March. And the median home price of homes went up to 319,000. That's a whopping 6.3% increase during a pandemic with people locked away for half the month during a life-threatening illness. Yeah. If you're scratching your head, trying to figure this one out, you're not alone. There is a lot of head scratching going on right now. And that's why in this video, I'm here to help you understand what's happening in the housing market, especially in Las Vegas. So you can make good decisions with your money and your living conditions. But before we get into that, please give me a thumbs up button below, because if you don't, YouTube will not share this video with others. Today it goes to YouTube prison, and it doesn't pass up. Subscribe if you haven't already to the Las Vegas Report YouTube channel so you don't miss all the important things going on in Las Vegas every single week. So hit that little notification button too because if you don't, YouTube won't let you know when one of our new videos have been released. Back to the housing market. The housing market is decided by supply and demand and that's Economics 101. But why is there a greater demand for buying homes in this craziness than there is people wanting to sell their home. Going into the coronavirus economic buzzsaw, Las Vegas was already a very strong seller's market, and it was on its way to becoming an even stronger one. Adam, exactly how do you figure out how it's a seller's market or buyer's market? Well, thank you, Adam, I'm, I'm glad you asked. There is a method to the madness. It's measured by how many homes are on the market. First, we look at the number of homes being bought. Then we say, if we don't add any more homes to the market at this rate of sales, how many months of supplies do we have before we run out? Bingo, there's your equation. The general rule of thumb is that if you have six months of supply, you have a balanced market. Less favored sellers, and if you have more, it's a buyer's market. Now coming out of winter, we had about two months of supply, which is not that great considering spring and summer are the highest demands for buyers. Well, luckily it's also a time a lot of sellers put their house on the market. And then a month later, we see who did more of which. Then like punks and honey fail, us realtors declare it's a seller's market for six or more weeks. So if the coronavirus hadn't come at us like Mike Tyson on Holyfield's ear, we were going to see major supply problems and demand was extremely strong. Check out this video here where I am incredibly wrong about the economic conditions I was expecting for 2020 before I had ever heard the word COVID-19, the economic planet destroyer. So by results, we know that the buyers won the first round of tug of war, prices went up. But why? This is gonna take a little digging. There are essentially two types of buyers and sellers, motivated and unmotivated. A motivated seller would be somebody who just got a job transfer and is expected to move out of state. An unmotivated seller is in no rush and they will only sell if it's convenient for them. Whenever there's uncertainty in the market from a major event or occurrence, it is not uncommon to see unmotivated buyers and unmotivated sellers just wait and see what happens. So if this were to happen in say equal numbers of unmotivated buyers and unmotivated sellers, we've not effectively changed the inventory equation of supply and demand. It will remain the same. There will just be fewer homes sold. Well, that begs the question, why did 30% more homes go on the market while at the same time buying conditions worsen? You know, fewer buyers could buy a home because, well, they just lost their job. Despite losing those buyers from the market, there was still a large number that had to buy a home. For example, I sold a postal worker's home and he had to find another home quick. 
He was stressed about this and we got it done. These buyers were not worried that the housing market would crash. After all, we have to have a place to live. Also, take a moment to consider who is going to rent to anyone. This is the riskiest time in history to be a landlord. A whole lot of people are calling up their landlords and saying, I'm so sorry, I just can't pay you. And landlords have no recourses. They can't remove them or charge them any late penalties. My prediction, it will be a very long time to get renters out that are unable to pay. Once the courts even open, can you imagine how backed up that system's gonna be? We have no idea how long the moratorium on evictions and foreclosures are gonna last, but it's a safe bet. And heck, we are in Las Vegas, right? Evictions and foreclosures will not be allowed at all during 2020. You know, it is an election year and voters don't exactly like being homeless. So, if I had tenants that couldn't pay, I would be offering money to get those tenants out. Heck, it just might be cheaper to send their kids to college if they agree to move out. Then I would sell that home. Landlords that do choose to stick it out will likely raise rents and ask for larger security deposits, making home ownership that much more attractive. There will be very limited supply in rental properties and they will carry a great risk to investors that own them. So it does make sense that there would be a lot of motivated buyers right now. Okay, so we had 2,758 motivated buyers that bought homes in March, but wouldn't there be even more motivated sellers under the circumstances? I mean, after all, 2008 is fresh in everyone's mind. You know, where we went from 6,000 homes on the market to 40,000 homes on the market in one month. I know that there are a lot of landlords that would love to sell, only they can't because they're locked into leases. And of course, there are a lot of people that can't afford to make their payments on their homes, but banks are offering forbearance and there is no pressure to get them to move out. So why would they? There are short-term rentals like Airbnb that are absolutely selling. I have personally sold two of them since the COVID-19 has reared its ugly head. Here's the X factor that really reduced the number of sellers. On March 20th, the governor eliminated the showings of all occupied homes. So unless you were willing to move out, you effectively couldn't sell your home. Heck, before that order even took place, this was happening already with unmotivated buyers. They weren't letting people into their home. This effectively cut our available homes in half, which makes sense. There is a pandemic going on. As of the making of this film, we have just over 4,000 homes at 4,099 homes that are vacant. That's just over one month of supply, despite the fact that inventory went up 30% in March. How soon will showings of these homes start up again or people start feeling comfortable to let people in is anyone's guess. But here's what we do know. The economy is shrinking, businesses are closing, and jobs are disappearing due to the coronavirus pandemic. All the while, the housing market prices keep churning higher, and now you know why. Will prices keep going up, or are they still in jeopardy of falling? Let's take a quick look at the last three recessions over a 30-year period of time of medium home prices and see if this can't shed some light. The last three recessions are in blue. As you can see, two of the last three did not affect the housing market at all. In fact, it went up. So there are some precedences of this happening before. Of course, in 2008, we were hit harder than any market in the country during the disastrous housing bubble. Are we looking at another 2008? Or will this be more like 1990 and 2001? There is some compelling arguments for why it could go up and why it could go down. What will be these indicating factors? What should you be looking for? There will be plenty of indicators, so we won't be caught off guard if you know what to look for. So watch for the next episode where I answer these questions. So if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit that bell. It is a crazy tumultuous time and I don't want you to miss a thing. Check out this video right here where I go over how you corona-proof your credit. Steps you have to take to protect your credit and let's get through this together. Thank you so much for watching and check out my other videos.